Now we just talked about exportation. Um, we went ahead and ran our job here, moved the signing certificate to a data set. When you export root certificates, you use the CERT format, as I mentioned before. Exporting personal certificates, you would use the format of PKCS12. This format is recognized most everywhere. You'd use binary mode in your file transfer. And also be aware that uh, private key content is included. And by the way, we will run a job a little bit later uh, exporting a personal certificate, and you'll notice uh, in that job that I include a, a password with the uh, job because once the certificate is used on the remote platform that it might be transferred to, uh, it should be protected with a password so that only uh, parties that have a need to know can open up the uh, certificate upon receipt. So now we'll, we'll run a job to create a, a personal certificate. Let's take a look at that. Go back here. And this is that JCL. This is SSL create personal certificate job E. Basically, it looks the same. Um, Let's assume we're creating and signing this personal certificate on the Z platform so that we can later export it to a data set and then FTP it in binary mode to the client platform that will eventually end up using it. So when this job, SSL Create Personal Certificate, runs, it assigns a distinguished name of client A1 and then all these other distinguished name fields to the certificate. Further down, we see it gets its window of validity, uh, May 28th, 2012 through May 28th, 2013, which is pretty typical to make these good for about a year. And then we have a label name assigned to the certificate, all lowercase, because this is what distributed platforms will expect, of IBM WebSphere MQ Unix. And then, very important, we indicate what we're going to sign this personal certificate with. We're going to sign it with CERTAUTH label A root CER, which is the certificate we created uh, in the previous steps. And it's important to know that once uh, this certificate arrives from the remote platform back to ZOS, if that's the configuration you're using, ZOS will have to have this certificate in its key ring in order to be able to authenticate this private certificate or personal certificate that's been created. So let's uh, go ahead and submit this one to create our personal certificate. And I think this was job B. <laughs> and that uh, ran well. Um, <clears throat> we'll go ahead now, and condition code zero again. We'll go ahead now and we'll connect this certificate to the key ring just because. We don't have to, but we're doing it uh, just to show that we can, but it's not necessarily uh, a requirement. So when you take a look at this job, you'll see um, that connecting the certificate will be done by its label. It'll be done to the key ring. It'll say now instead of a usage of cert auth, it has a usage of personal. With the same authority, the RAC D cert commands are being issued under MQM task. And so we'll run that. do a submit here. Actually, let me take a quick look at it one more time. I just want to grab out the rack DSERC command that we're going to issue manually after this runs. So we'll submit this. This must be job F. And when we back out to our command panels. We now see that not only do we have our signing certificate, which just signed this personal certificate in our keyring, we now also have, as a default yes certificate, our IBM Webster MQ Unix uh, personal certificate. And so our keyring is building up nicely. As an aside, I did want to mention, depending on uh, where your certificates are located. Uh, your certificates will have different uh, file types on Windows for for PKCS12 certificate, which this certificate would end up being B. 
because it includes a private key um, you will have an extension on it of that P12 if we were using the CERT signed certificate which is a format of CERT binary 64 this would have a file extension on Windows of that CER on Unix it would have a file extension of dot arm so if it became necessary to move the certificate to those platforms those might be the extensions you would have to put in place on the Z platform the CERT binary 64 exported certificate would have a low-level qualifier of dot arm which we saw and then if it was a certificate with a private key in it a format PKCS that would have a low-level qualifier of dot DER okay so moving on just as general information uh, we wanted to distinguish between what the effects of REC DSERT GENSERT or REC DSERT CONNECT were well REC DSERT GENSERT or REC DSERT AD can be used to add certificates to a REC F database but one of the differences with uh, REC DSERT GENSERT is that the GENSERT in addition to adding a certificate to the keyring can also be used to create a public private key pair for SSL protection. Services such as VeriSign or Thought use similar processes such as CSR or certificate signing requests in order to provide users with certificates which have been validated by those third parties. So uh, one of the main reasons we're using RECF uh, here to do these illustrations is because it won't cost us a thousand dollars to uh, to give the basic idea of, of how SSL is implemented implemented to the user or to the viewer. Um, RAC DSERT Connect, on the other hand, stores the certificate into the keyring. So these are really two different things. One makes the certificate known to the RACF database, whereas the other actually places it into the keyring. So you can have one without the other, um, and uh, things will not work as expected, but both can be done independently. We'll discuss expiring certificates in just a minute. Uh, but first let's take a look at uh, exporting that certificate that we just uh, connected to the keyring. We'll go back to our womac.work JCL, find SSL, and then we have a job called export personal certificate. Um, this JCL is written again to export IBM Webster MQ Unix this is our G job I think believe this is the very last job we're going to run it'll write it out to a data set called tapper.womacux.dir and once again we said we use the .dir format for PKCS 12 uh, uh, format certificates these contents once they're moved to that data set here uh, can be FTP'd in binary mode and given the password can be opened by the receiving platform in this case the password that was uh, associated with the certificate was IBM so we'll just run this but before I do that let me grab my data set name again and we do a submit and we type G and by the way that character doesn't have to be G but um, it just keeps things in order I back up I take a look at my data set and sure enough there it exists I look at my information it shows that I created it today very similar to the uh, signing certificate export data set and when I browse it it's utterly unreadable um, <laughs> but that's as it should be because it does contain a, a private key okay let's discuss uh, certificate renewal now certificates always eventually expire the personal certificate that I had in the keyring had a a uh, time window of only a year. When it comes to updating certificates which which have already expired for instance overnight uh, this can be disruptive to business operations. To avoid this many IBM Tech Notes recommend proactive renewals of certificates which may be about to expire. Now the job you're looking at here uh, was pulled from Tech Note 128143 which provides this sample JCL in order to allow the user to check an unloaded copy of the RACF database. You can unload the RACF database by running a utility called IRRDBU 
zero zero. That will list all of your certificates in order of expiration. Um, once this job is run so that you can determine uh, which ones need to get uh, action done upon them uh, first. Now for MQ series, while you can create uh, new certificates using the existing label name, if doing so, you should um, always recycle the Webster MQ channel initiator on ZOS. Since uh, MQ has no mechanism to determine or differentiate between certificates based solely on the label name. So as renewal go goes, there are several methods to renew certificates and you're best to use the method most accommodating to your business. If using RACF, uh, you may choose to use the rekey and rollover methods documented in the RACF command language reference, if that's best for your environment. I did want to uh, show what references uh, we recommend you take a look at. Um, there's a good red book, the Webster MQ Security in an Enterprise Environment. Uh, I use uh, on a fairly frequent basis the RECF command language reference because that documents uh, everything you need to know about all the RAC DSERT commands. And then there's some great diagnostic information that can be found in the system SSL programming uh, book at the bottom there. And the SSL uh, programming guide and reference uh, provide further backup to, uh, to that information. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. And as always, uh, if any uh, problems involving SSL do occur, feel free to contact the Level 2 Support Center, and uh, we'll be glad to help work through the issue. Thanks a lot, and uh, have a good day.